Welcome back. We're here with uh, associate head coach Mike Denbrock and wide receivers coach. I don't want to short you there, coach. Um, Fancy title. I know, right? And, coach, I think the first thing I want to ask you is, obviously this signing day is a little bit different than uh, when we went through this process back in the day, but what what happened? Why didn't – why didn't I get an 18-wheeler at, mo <laughs> at modern day? I'm just – I'm curious, man. Uh, at that time, the price of gas was just a little bit too expensive. So it's, uh, it's to, due to, to the make economy. It. You know, it's helped. It's helped, definitely. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So. So, you're back out, so you're back out on the West Coast now uh, as a recruiter. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, where you're recruiting uh, and kind of your role as the associate head coach now uh, in the recruiting process. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, offensively really is an overall – you know, it, it's my responsibility to kind of uh, manage the offensive roster, if you will, and, and make sure that, uh, you know, we're balanced in the class that we're recruiting, uh, that we've got enough playmakers, that we've got some uh, electric athletes that can, uh, you know, touch the ball and score points, uh, you know, whether that's a off, an offensive line, uh, you know, making sure the balance is right there where we've got, you know, the right number of guys, uh, receivers, all of it, you know, obviously I've got a great offensive staff to work with that, that helps me along the way but uh it's kind of my job to kind of manage that and make sure you know we need this many wide receivers let's make sure we're looking at this many quarterbacks let's make sure this that and so those discussions kind of uh fall on my shoulders uh to make sure that you know we've got the type of dynamic offense that uh the university of notre dame deserves number one uh specifically i recruit down in southern california i've got to stretch down through there uh some unbelievable relationships that i've had for uh as you know for uh, right. over 20 years or more uh, of recruiting out there so and then I have the Chicago the greater Chicago area that uh, is a specific area of mine as well so uh, I also you know travel a lot uh, touching on all of the offensive guys from around the country that uh, are going to be part of our our Notre Dame family so uh, it's a busy time you know yeah. in uh keeping uh, up on those guys and making sure my relationship with those guys and, and the guy who kind of helps set the tone of what we do here offensively uh, gives me an opportunity to build relationships with every, every recruit on the offensive side of the ball. Well, obviously, with especially with you know with the wife and, and Chance, you know, the man, yeah. um, it, it obviously makes it more difficult. Uh, but now, I, you know, kind of switching gears a little bit or, or kind of maybe hitting back on the same topic, how do you decide really what the right ratio of guys is? You talk about electric electric players, but you got to have you kind of the right balance there. So how do you kind of decide what what's the best for the team? Yeah, I mean, some of it is dictated obviously by um, you know some of the needs on defense, some of the needs on offense. Where where are the glaring weaknesses that you know you need to address through the recruiting process? But uh, pretty standard wise, you know, we'd like to have. Uh, at least 13, 14 offensive linemen in the program. Uh, we'd like to be near 9, 10 scholarship wide receivers, um, three, four, sometimes five uh, running backs, depending on, on how that's going. And, and obviously our depth at quarterback kind of speaks for itself. Right. Um, so building that has been a process uh, over the course of the last six years and obviously uh, adding in this recruiting class and making sure we got those numbers to where uh, they replenish themselves uh, as the kids develop and, and they get a chance to kind of have their time in the sun. Uh, they grow within the program and, and, uh, and then get an opportunity to get out there and play right away. Uh, now kind of moving down the, uh, the cycle a little bit, a little bit uh, closer into the focus, um, how does the offensive game prep work? Obviously, I wasn't involved with that, so I have, I'm not exactly familiar, but you kind of have a unique scenario with, with you, Coach Kelly, and then Coach Sanford now. You guys all kind of work as a team, or how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I, and I would include the rest of the offensive staff in there as well. I mean, it, it's really – uh, you know, it's best idea wins. It's, uh, you know, we, we obviously all spend a great deal of time uh, studying our opponent and, and understanding their weaknesses and trying to attack those from an offensive standpoint. And then, you know, it's kind of on each of us to to bring ideas to the table about where what the direction is. And then uh, it's really falls on my shoulders to make the final decision about, you know, what we go with and what we don't go with. And kind of more from a framework of an overall standpoint, trying to get a flow in the game plan between what we're doing in the running game, what we're doing in the passing game, try to intermix those two things right. together uh, so that we're not too lopsided on one side or the other and, and kind of oversee that whole process. But everybody chips in and everybody c contributes to what we're doing. Uh, you know, Mike Sanford obviously has a, 
a great deal to do with that as as well as Coach Kelly. But, you know, Harry Heastand uh, with the running game in particular and our protections and the way we structure those uh, is a huge piece of the puzzle. And Scott Booker and Autry Denson obviously are welcome to have any type of input into what we're doing. Doesn't mean we're necessarily going to take anybody's certain right. guy's idea, but we're going to throw it around and make sure we're doing the best thing we can to be successful. No, and I think it's a, it's an incredibly interesting situation. Now moving down into your, your position focus of the wide receivers, which – Really, it might be the most productive, but also diverse. We've got guys that, that are interested in, in many different things, you know, political <laughs> aspirations, what have you. We got we got a lot of guys that are involved, but I, I, I'd like to just kind of have you hit on the development of that position group and, and the tenacity with which they play. It, it was so difficult for us to go against you um, as a defense in the seven-on-seven seven skelly drills because those those receivers are so productive. Just talk a little bit about their development. Yeah, I think, it, you know, the, the number one thing when we're going out and recruiting guys, um, you know, athleticism certainly run, certainly length is important, but competitiveness is, is, is as important as any of those other things. And having a room full of guys that um, are competitive to the point where they certainly want to be the guy. They want to touch the ball. They want to be the guy who's making the big plays in Notre Dame right. Stadium and bringing the crowd to its feet. Uh, but also – they understand that the development of our unit as a whole is integral to us being successful offensively. So I've got – there's a great dynamic in the wide receiver room. Uh, those guys work their tails off uh, for me every day on the practice field. But they bring that competitiveness to it when it's their turn. They know they've got to be ready to answer the bell and step up because that's what's expected of the guys that play wide receiver at the University of Notre Dame, and they do a good job of it. Right, and I guess now that brings us to our final topic, and that is the – the hot topic. Oh, and, uh, and it's so it's it's 16. <laughs> What's hot? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. 16 it's hot topics. 16 questions. Nice. Rapid fire. We're okay. going to do them really quick. Okay. Um, you got to answer them as fast as you possibly can, as honestly as you possibly can. Are oh, you ready? boy. Uh, I hope. With that being said, we now bring you to the hot topic. <laughs> Number one, would you rather go for one or two? Oh, one. Receiver to fur? Oh, receive. Heads or tails? Tails never fails. If you were a type of food, what would you be? Oh, my Lord. Uh, <laughs> looking at my middle, a cheeseburger, obviously. Hey, they're tasty. What's your spirit animal? Oh, wow. That's a, a bear. A, I, like I that. have no idea. There you go. Uh, Kobe <laughs> or Jordan? Oh, Jordan. Oh, it's not even close. What Disney princess are you, Coach? <laughs> well, I have a four-year-old son. Uh, <laughs> he watched, Yeah, he likes, uh, what is the movie called? Uh, What's the one with the, the ice and the <laughs> frozen? Coach. Frozen, yeah, Elsa? whatever. The, Elsa, Elsa. There, there you go, go. Elsa. Right. I'll be Elsa. Ideal burrito type. Oh, chicken loaded. There you go. Yeah. Do you think Disney World is a trap operated by a mouse? Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, if you have a four-year-old, you understand that concept. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be Coach Brian Kelly or Sports Information Director Michael Burst for a day? Oh, Lord. Dealing with the media? I'd rather be Brian <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> uh, Coach, do you use umbrellas? Uh, absolutely not, although I should, considering I have so little hair that I get rained on my bald spot all the time. So, <laughs> I mean, Which you, is extensive, by you, the way. You understand. I mean, you're, you're in the wrong here. Yeah. Uh, Go-to dance move. Oh, uh, stanky leg. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you, <laughs> if, if your life was a movie, what actor plays you? Oh, uh, I, I think the guy – who's the guy from Seinfeld? Uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Putty. Uh, 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 the, whoever that guy is. I don't know what his name is. What, what, is oh, yeah, whoever I had guy. no idea. I'll let yeah, Google yeah. it. Uh, scale 1 to 10, how attractive are you? Oh, after recruiting and eating in these people's houses, <laughs> I'm about a 3 plus. <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, fly. Okay. You got to be able to fly. Finally, Coach, do you, do you like being tickled? No, God, no. You sure? No, thanks. Go try it. I'll pass. Coach, you Appreciate made it in a hot you, topic. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. We'll uh... –